hello um this is francis again um welcome to daytime uh, meditation um this afternoon uh, i'm trapped in the rain it's just raining and uh, no sunshine <laughs> and this uh, causes me to um, begin to ponder and uh, in part of my meditations this afternoon my mind goes to the book of Zechariah praise God Zechariah chapter 10 verse 1 it says uh, ask the Lord for rain in the time of the latter rain praise the Lord the Lord will make flashing clouds he will give them showers of rain every grass in the field for everyone hallelujah praise the lord if you look at this uh, scripture you begin to wonder uh, do you have to ask for rain yes uh, you see um, what God has been doing uh, in his word is that he's been using natural things to help us understand spiritual things um, for example when God talks about water um, he's talking about um, something that's refreshing something that flows Something that is clean, clear, crystal clear, pure. Uh, something that has to speaks about life because water gives life. So when God is talking about rain, what we normally should do is to try and figure out what is the essence, what's the essence, what's, what's the what's the use for rain? Why is rain very important? Uh, when you think about that, your mind easily just goes to a farmer. You know, um, a farmer needs rain, needs water to water his plants. He wants his plants to be watered. Praise God. But you see here, um, there is the early rain or the former rain and the latter rain. The early rain and the latter rain. Now, the early rain, when it comes, it comes with so much noise, so much... Uh, pressure so much um, energy you know uh, and the essence for the, that type of rain is to help soften the, the soil to help soften the soil praise God but you see once you plant your seed you don't need that kind of rain anymore because if it rains in that uh, ferocious manner, it's going to pull out your your seed from the soil. So you don't need that. All you just need the early rain for is to help you prepare the ground, to prepare the soil. Hallelujah. Now, but when he now talks about the latter rain, the latter rain, you know, um, there's a way it, it falls. It doesn't fall with that kind of strength anymore. It comes in very soft, you know, like a shower. Uh, the essence is to water the plants. Praise the Lord. Let's look at the book of uh, Deuteronomy. The book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 11, verse 14. I read from verse 13 and it shall be that if you earnestly obey my commandments which I command you today to love the Lord your God and serve him with all your heart and with all your soul then I will give you the rain for your land in its season the early rain and the latter rain that you may gather in your grains your new wine and your oil and I will send grass in your fields for your livestock that you may eat 
and the fear. Praise God. Now, here is Deuteronomy. A lot of times, um, we tend to look at things that happen in the Old Testament and we want to take it literally without understanding the reason why those things happened that way. At that time, Jesus had not come. So what God was doing was to deal with his people through natural daily activities and occurrences and use it to teach them so that they can be able to understand the essence of what he's saying. Don't forget God is the spirit. And his level of intelligence is so high that people cannot understand. That's why Hebrews chapter 1 tells us that God in uh, time past spoke to our fathers through the prophets. And he did that in various ways in diverse manners. But in this day, in our day today, He's not speaking through the prophets anymore. He's speaking to us directly from his son. Why? Because his son has come and men have been elevated from the level of the region of the dead to the level of the region of life. Praise God. Hallelujah. So if you look at this, you see that it says the early rain and the latter rain. Now here it says if you obey my commandments. But from the book of Zechariah, it's a different thing altogether. Or it is a different, it comes in a different way. In the book of Zechariah, praise the Lord. It says, ask the Lord for rain. So we're supposed to ask the Lord. Now, he's not talking to people who are not uh, who do not understand spiritual things. It says, in the time of the latter rain. So it means that these people, this people he's talking to know timings, times and seasons. So if he's saying, ask the Lord for rain in the time of the latter rain. So there is a time for the latter rain. There's a time for the early rain and there's a time for the latter rain. Now here, he's saying, ask the Lord for rain there's a reason for that now remember I had mentioned that rain or water is used to interpret spiritual things praise the Lord so when he says ask for rain that rain is supposed to do what supposed to prepare God's people it's supposed to prepare God's people. Now, that rain is spirit. That rain is not only spirit. It is also the word. Remember, spirit and word. I mean, if you remember what he was saying uh, when he was talking about the parable of the sower, he said that the sower went out to sow. Now, when the sower went out to sow, what he went to sow is God's word, is the word of the kingdom. Now, some of the words fell on different, the words fell on different specimens of hearts. It says some fell on good soil, some fell on stony ground, some fell on the wayside, you know, some fell among thorns. Now, these are different conditions of men's hearts. Hallelujah. The one that fell on, on, uh, on the way, birds just came and ate it. The ones that fell on uh, uh, stony uh, ground, very hard ground. That ground has not been prepared. It's still hard. Um, persecution. You know, persecution, uh, the sun came, and different kinds of trials, and those caused it to wither off. The one that fell among thorns, the cares of this life, the cares and the demands of life. 
choked it. You know, so it couldn't have any chance of survival. But the ones that fell on good grounds, those ones grew in three dimensions, 30 folds, 60 folds, and 100 folds. So when the rain is coming, the rain is coming to help the seed to grow. Praise the Lord. So when God is talking about rain here, he's talking about the kind of teachings, not like a preaching that comes like the early rain that brings you into the kingdom, but rather it's softer. It, it's, it, it, it's more calmer so that digestion can take place. Praise the Lord. So like I said, it's really, really raining. And I'm praying that you and I will be conscious in the spirit to know when to pray for the, uh, the latter rain. And I perceive that right now is the time for us to intercede and pray for the latter rain. Why? Because of the times that we live in. Look at the book of uh, James. Hallelujah. Finally, the book of James, James chapter 5, verse... Um, seven. It says, therefore be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer awaits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and latter rain. Praise the Lord. Now, here it says, the farmer, who is, who is the father, is waiting for the precious fruit of the earth. This precious fruit of the earth is not uh, corn is you and I is you and I remember I told you that God uses natural things to help us understand spiritual things here it says brethren be patient until the coming of the Lord see how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and the latter rain hallelujah so you see waiting patiently until he received the early and the latter rain like i said before i'm just praying for us to be able to understand because it's a promise that he promised us he says i will give you the early and the latter rain in one month and the rain will fall moderately so that it can be able to produce the right kind of increase and harvest that god intends Hallelujah. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen.